for launch your WordPress site on Pantheon. Uh, today we have two great guest speakers. We have Austin Smith from Alley Interactive and Josh Koning, a co-founder and head of developer experience here at Pantheon. Um, Alley Interactive builds and launches big websites for top publishers such as Chalkbeat and the New Republic. So in this webinar, they're going to share with you how they pull off complex WordPress launches on Pantheon. So what we're going to do today is um, Josh is going to give us a quick overview of Pantheon and then give us a demo. And then after the demo, he and Austin are actually going to have a dialogue around how they launch Chalkbeat on Pantheon. Um, this is going to be an interactive dialogue, so please feel free to send your questions through the chat. Um, this session will be recorded, and our goal is to finish around 12.45. Um, so over to you, Josh. Thanks, Ursula. So uh, as you may are, are no doubt aware, we recently announced our WordPress support on the Pantheon platform, and uh, we're really excited to be able to offer the, the, the tools and benefits that have been really popular within the Drupal website community over the past couple of years to all the WordPress developers out there, and of course to all the many web developers, uh, professional developers, who use a mix of both tools in, in their lives. Um, so uh, you, Ursula, introduced both Austin and myself quite well. Um, Pantheon's mission is to power the world's website. That is what we are setting out to do, and we are looking at it from the perspective of the popular open source technologies that are used to build professional grade websites and the types of workflows and tools professional website developers need to be successful in their jobs. And our perspective is that if we can make the makers successful, um, that will roll up to making the organizations that employ the makers successful and make us successful at the end of the day. Um, that is the scope at which we are, we are trying to operate. We're, we're really trying to solve a problem for a broad number of people, and uh, if we are successful, we will run a very large number of websites. We're already off to a pretty good start. Um, and what we're doing is bringing, we're doing that by bringing the true value benefit, uh, the true value proposition of, quote, the cloud, um, which I've been talking about in presentations for like six years now, uh, to open source CMS, uh, starting with Drupal and now to WordPress and, and who knows what else in the future. Uh, and we think that the, the cloud has made a lot of promises. Um, you know, over the past decade almost, you've been, people have been hearing about this and it's, a, it's kind of reached the point of, you know, buzzword aphasia, where it could mean any number of things. But, but really, when you boil it down, rather than a specific technology, what people talk about when they talk about the cloud as a positive, they mean, you know, fewer headaches, uh, and less responsibility, and more things just working. So specifically for websites, that means you can provision instantly, you don't have to worry about maintenance, you don't have to worry about servers, you can scale, you don't have to worry so much about upgrades, you're not managing Linux kernel this or Apache version that, and, and you're able to focus more on innovation and you're able to, to get innovation being delivered from sort of the cloud platform. Rather than doing all the server stuff yourself, you say, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll let a cloud do that server stuff for us and we'll get a lot of the benefits and we can focus on things that are further up the stack. Uh, that, that's the promise of the cloud. The problem is that uh, for a lot of people, especially in the website world, the cloud thus far has really just meant moving your servers from one place to another. Um, moving from servers in your office to servers that are in Amazon's office, or moving from a dedicated uh, server where you actually knew there was a box in a rack somewhere that was yours to a dedicated instance that's in a cloud somewhere that you, know, you can provision mu much more quickly, but at the end of the day, you're really just getting a server. Um, all the virtual, all, and, and, and let's not minimize the benefits there, they're huge, right? Not, not having to worry about power consumption, not having to worry about what happens you know, if somebody trips over a cable in your office, and being able to put all that on a, on a provider who excels at meeting and exceeding your expectations for those responsibilities has been a big win for businesses and organizations across the spectrum. But a lot of the real benefits you would hope to see operationally for website developers, website owners, and business owners that depend on websites to power their business day in and day out, really all the cloud has done is made it easier to get more servers. And as our director of operations, uh, Nick Seelow, is fond of saving, most servers, no problems. Um, and so we, we think that the, the true value of the cloud is really just beginning to be delivered to the world of websites, and we like to think that we're a part of that. Um, so the cloud is not just moving your servers from your closet to some you know, un unknown server farm in the sky. It really means uh, getting away from servers as the unit of currency that are necessary to power your application. So our cloud infrastructure is uh, multi-tenant, meaning that there's a common infrastructure for all sites, 
Um, it means that there's a lower total cost of ownership. It means that we deliver innovations and upgrades to everybody. Um, we're not setting up little snowflake clusters here or there that we manage on a per customer basis. We have one big platform and it powers everybody on Pantheon. And, and that's great because it means that our high-end customers know that they can scale and continue to scale because they're just a drop in the bucket. Even our biggest customers are just a drop in the bucket in terms of our aggregate load and aggregate traffic. And it's great for our lower, uh, lower end customers because they get all the power tools that, that a big enterprise customer would want. The deployment workflow, the ability to scale, the performance you want uh, from those very high-end websites because they're sharing one common multi-tenant platform. Um, and we're able to deliver that type of multi-tenancy because of our use of Linux containers. Rather than virtual machines and rather than, well, first of all, rather than going back to the dark days of shared hosting, which obviously everyone knows doesn't really work, uh, doesn't work out so well at scale. Um, and rather than going on a, uh, uh, a virtual machine-based architecture where you're spinning up an EC2 instance or a cluster of instances for a customer or a virtual machine here or a dedicated server there, we use Linux containers, which is a novel but not unheard of lower level facility for isolating and delivering resources within one host system to an application. This is how the big boys on the internet actually do it. It's how Google runs all their services. It's how Salesforce's Heroku runs. Internally at, at, at Facebook, they use a container container-centric architecture. Um, and there are more open source projects that are helping bring that out to, uh, to the public. OpenShift by Red Hat is delivering that as a service um, in a very generic context, not very useful for websites yet, but just generically if they deliver containers. The Docker project is making it easier for developers to work on defining their own containers and so forth. And we've actually taken this to scale. We run hundreds of thousands of Linux containers. Um, and uh, we're one of the largest scale implementations of these facilities in a consumer-grade context. I'm sure Google actually runs, which puts our infrastructure to shame, but you actually can't run your stuff on Google's container infrastructure, whereas you can run your website on Pantheon. Um, and what that means is we can actually deliver on those cloud benefits, right? You get provisioning on demand, and it's almost, in, it's not actually instantaneous, but it's pretty close to instantaneous compared to like spinning up uh, servers, installing software, configuring different virtual hosts, and then eventually maybe an N number of hours later being able to spin your website up. Um, you can spin up a new site on Pantheon in under five minutes. Um, and that includes all three environments and all the pieces needed to make that work. Um, and we can, we're actually working on getting that speed down every day. Uh, there's no maintenance because we're handling the entire software stack and, of course, everything beneath that. So the actual LAMP environment that you need to run your website application, we deliver, we maintain, we ensure is up to the best in industry standards for performance, security, scalability and reliably, and we make, you know, monitor and maintain and upgrade those, uh, those configurations, you know, consistently. We also handle everything under the hood from there. So don't worry about your Linux kernel. Don't worry about whether or not the, the, there's crop of security on the, the, the shell or anything else like that. Those are all, those are all handled by Pantheon um, without you having to worry about it. Again, it's a division of responsibilities. There's a whole website that needs to get built. That's very complex. We'll take everything from the application environment on down and just make sure that it's handled so you don't have to worry about maintaining or monitoring that. And finally, you get the benefit of uh, some automatic upgrades. Every time we make an innovation to the platform, it's deployed to all of our customers. Um, every time we find a breakthrough way to shave 10 to 20% off of the page load time, that's deployed to all of our customers. Every time we upgrade our underlying infrastructure to use better hardware, um, better networking, you know, any of those low-level improvements, SSDs, et cetera, those are things that all of our customers uh, get. And it's not a question of having to retool and migrate and go through an expensive and sometimes painful process to get yourself up to the state of the art. Pantheon keeps you onto the state of the art over the long haul without you having to do anything. Um, and th th that, that translates into best-in-class performance and almost no downtime. Um, and uh, nobody can promise zero percent downtime because that's not the way the internet was built. But we promise that you know the down, the, the reliability you will see on Pantheon is uh, is top notch, and that's one of the core values that we offer to our customers. More importantly, if there's any reason why it's not top notch, that's our responsibility to deal with. You know whether that's something that happens uh, in the middle of the afternoon because a cloud server goes poof, or in the middle of the night because a network uh, link breaks down. We are on this platform and covering it 24-7 so that website developers and website designers no longer have to, quote, unquote, carry the pager. Nobody, I don't think anybody has pagers anymore. Everybody just gives their clients their cell phone number. But they still have to deal with these types of, you know, unknown emergency break fix issues. Not anymore with Pantheon. That's our responsibility. We do a heck of a good job of it, and you don't have to worry about that anymore. 
Um, so uh, other benefits there, security and reliability. This is a particularly uh, 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 strong concern in the WordPress community. One of the things we, we hear a lot from uh, other developers uh, as we look to embrace WordPress is, you know, how are you going to handle questions around uh, security? And we've actually thought quite a lot about this. You know, from the stand, I, we, we are focusing on these two content management systems as our primary uh, services to our customers, the professional developers that use our platform to build their sites. But from a security standpoint, even though we know everybody's installing WordPress and Drupal, we have to assume that actually they're just installing PHP rootkits and trying to hack the system. And no customer is actually trusted on the Pantheon platform. So everyone's uh, 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 application is contained so that no one application can negatively affect the other. And we put in place a lot of uh, safeguards and security, both in terms of you know, how we architect our system, but also just by giving people different environments for dev, test, and production that minimize the risks people typically see. Uh, in WordPress, most of, the most, most of the egregious security liabilities come from an abuse of WordPress's uh, ability to download and its own plugins. Uh, in Pantheon, we allow you to make use of that great functionality, but only in the development environment. And then you check in that code and you deploy it. I'll demo that in a little bit. But what that means is your public website is never vulnerable to any of these things where, oh my gosh, you know, somehow somebody got a, you know, a, a, did a malformed query and then my website downloaded some rootkit or some WordPress hack kit and now my website is hacking other people's websites or it's distributing phishing software or malware or being used as part of a botnet. Your public website is never going to be vulnerable to those types of attacks because it's not able to download its own code. We have a, we have a workflow for updating the code base of the website that, um, that both provides a lot of value to website developers, but also provides a lot of security for production sites. The other thing we can offer is a smooth scaling. Uh, this means that as you grow, you're not shifting architectures. You don't ever have to go through this process of saying, ah, okay, we've got to get off of our shared host and onto a VPS or a, a, a dedicated instance because we just need more memory. That, that change is never going to happen. Worse, you're never going to have to go through the change of saying, oh my gosh, we've outgrown our one box, the one box architecture, uh, and we need to move to some kind of cluster. And I don't even, you know, need, I don't even understand how to set that up, but it's certainly complicated. We've actually, you know, that's, that's the world that we came from. Pantheon as one platform already has a distributed web scale architecture for every single site, including the freebie sandbox sites. They're all set up to be able to scale from 10 page views to 10 million, all within our software. And the, the characteristics of the site as you scale do not change. You don't need to refactor your application. You don't need to go through a migration process. You don't have to like export or import anywhere. We just scale you out to more of the platform and it just works. And that's been a really, really uh, strong benefit for our customers, especially those who have uh, you know, started with the small site and scaled out to much larger websites. And of course, the innovation. That's, that's the, the flip side of our um, uh, uh, the, the hardware level innovation or the, the lower level uh, platform innovation. We're building better and better tools for everybody. So, you know, have you ever wanted to use WordPress CLI? Well, now you can. Pantheon makes it really easy to do that. Do you want to be able to use our, our kind of workflow tools? And now you can. You can use continuous integration if you've been uh, thinking about doing that but never really understood how to approach the problem or always had it be the thing that slips off your to-do list because just getting the site out there took priority, which it always does. Pantheon gives you all these tools and they're constantly improving. Again, you're getting a constantly improving set of tools that we deliver to all of our developers and all the sites. Um, and for you, at the end of the day, that means you can focus on what matters, your business, your website, um, the actual real world impact you're trying to have, and you get results. So basically, you can build more, better websites more quickly, scale them larger as they're successful, which will lead to more, more visitors, more leads, more revenue, more clients if you're a website developer. I mean, at the end of the day, that's really the value proposition we're making. Is we'll make you more effective, you'll be more successful, that makes us successful, and honestly, the internet gets better for everybody and everybody wins. That's the way Pantheon sees it. Um, and so here's just a little breakdown of, of what you might uh, be used to if you're like looking at DIY hosting versus kind of quote unquote managed hosting versus Pantheon, you know, the, the level of things that are taken care of. Our, our perspective is your focus should really be on the amazing website and we'll take everything from the application environment on down. That includes the scaling, the workflow, and of course the operating system, hardware, everything else below that. Um, and we run that with our professional website platform. Uh, just to give you a sense of how that works, we, we really split it into three core components. We have a runtime matrix, which is actually the PHP environments where your website applications will execute. And that scales across many very large servers. That's the hundreds of thousands of containers I talked about before. 
Um, we have a content base because we're not just running like uh, Heroku does a stateless application runtime worker farm for and that means they have a database and they've got files. And we have solved that problem in a way that is totally novel in the industry. Problems that, that Heroku guys said we couldn't solve or they didn't believe we could solve, we've solved. To provide a, uh, a store for content, both the database content and the files content that can sort of meet the demands of that distributed uh, runtime matrix. And then we give you a dashboard to control it all. There's, there's coherence to all this because we're managing it. It's not something that's being set up, you know, this cluster here, that cluster there. We've built software that maintains all that. We use software to scale people. And we give you software via the dashboard and our command line tools to actually set up and manage your websites for yourself. And we think this provides a really dynamite combination for people looking to build, launch, and run websites, you know, both large and small. So uh, I'm, with that, I'm going to jump really quickly into the demo. Uh, just so you can see a little bit of what we're talking about, uh, which means I need to exit out of Keynote and hide that. So I've got a, I'm going to do an import real quick. So this is just my dashboard. I click add a site, and this is a webinar import demo. Call it that. And I'll go over to the import tab. And I'm going to give it the URL. I've, I've stuck the, the import that I'm going to use, which was created by a popular WordPress plugin called Duplicator. I just stuck it on S3. And I'm going to click Import Site. And uh, this will take a, a, a few minutes. But what it's going to do is download the, the zip file from the URL that I gave it. It will uh, examine it, determine what's in there, whether it's WordPress or Drupal, find where the database export is. It's going to set up uh, new application containers for dev, test, and live. It's going to set up database containers for dev, test, and live. It's going to load the code into those application containers and import the database into the database. It's going to take any files that were added as part of that and put them into the file system. And then when all that's done, it's going to kind of run a final convergence to make sure that they're all connected and integrated and, uh, and put them together. Um, I'm going to let that go in the background. I have a, another WordPress site that I just set up real quick here that I'll show you. Um, the, uh, the, the Pantheon dashboard, as I said, provides dev, test, and live environment. So you really get three copies of your website, which is a best practice in terms of how you want to be able to develop. And what this gives you is the ability to have development work be ongoing in your development environment, working on the theme, working on the plugins, whatever it is, while your live website is out there, up and running, serving customers, new, new posts are being added, new comments are being added, new pages are being added. And then when you are ready to do a new deployment, your test environment allows you to bring those two things together. You take all the new code that you've worked on in your dev environment, and you take all the content, the database and files that have been added uh, by users and admins in the live environment, and you pull them together. And that way you can say, okay, I'm going to look at what the latest code and the latest content do and make sure that they work. Because very often, you know, even if you're just doing CSS development, you'll be developing against you know, last month's content and make some decisions about your design rules that then suddenly blow up when they go against yesterday's or today's content. And we want to minimize the chance of that happening for any developer. And then when you're ready to deploy live, it's uh, just as easy as clicking deploy. Um, so as you can see here, um, each one of these, you have a, a, a button you can click to go to the site. Here's the site, right? Here's the, here's the quick Pantheon site that I just set up uh, uh, in the 10 minutes before here. And you have access uh, to, to do development in a number of ways. We, we use version control for all everything we do on Pantheon because that's the best practice. All websites should be built with version control. Um, but we also allow developers to use the tools that they're very familiar with, whether that's uh, an FTP interface. We actually have that. And there's connection information for FTP right now. Or even inside WordPress, you can use their built-in uh, uh, plugin tools. So if I go into here and I want to install some plugins, um, I could say add a new plugin, and I could search. Let's do it. Let's add an SEO plugin because um, that's everybody needs SEO. And you might start with a plugin. Okay, SEO Ultimate. That sounds good. Um, seems good. Let's install it. And what's going to happen here is WordPress is going to do its thing in terms of installing. It's working on it. It's installing. It's successfully installed. If I bump back out to the Pantheon dashboard for this site, what I'm going to see is that Pantheon is aware of the changes that have been made. And I can actually go and see, and, OK, this looks sane. It's all plugins, SEO, ultimate. That seems about right. And uh, supposing this is something I'd like to keep and deploy, I can say, all right, SEO, ultimate, here we go. I'll click commit. 
And now I'm using version control without having to learn any of the semantics of Git, without having to touch a command line, without having to deal with any of the sort of blockers that, you know, people say, oh, I know I should be doing that, but it's too much. Um, you don't have to. So the dashboard allows you to use, whether it's uh, through the FTP interface or even through WordPress's built-in interface, the ability to develop right in Pantheon. You don't need to do a local development environment, although you can. You don't need to do anything other than spin up a site and you're good to go. Um, and then uh, I'll show you over here in the test environment, what we've got is uh, the, uh, it's one commit, it's ready to go into the test environment, and I can check this box to pull files uh, and content from the database and actually to be able to like fix any embedded URLs that are in that content in the database. So if, for instance, my live environment, you know, there are some places in WordPress where those URLs will get inserted into content, we'll actually automatically fix that for you. And supposing I wanted to, I could standardize everything to be on HTTPS. Like I'm, I'm working on a secure system, so I want to make sure that all the URLs on my site are secure URLs. So we can just run that, and that's going to bring those things together in the context that I talked about, where you'll be able to actually test this and make sure that it looks really good. And then when you deploy, you have a very high degree of confidence that your deployment is going to go flawlessly, because you know exactly what's going to happen. Um, nobody else, to my knowledge, actually provides this type of best practice, continuous integration style workflow for the, the WordPress world. And uh, we're excited to see what people think of it. And clearly, this is a professional grade tool, so it maybe not, maybe not the, the best for every single individual blog out there. But I don't think there's anybody that shouldn't have access to these types of tools, so we're happy to make it available. And again, if, so if we go to the testing site here, it'll spin up. And uh, if I go and I log in, because uh, that would have done all my cookies, uh, we're going to see that. In fact, in the plugins area, we have the SEO Ultimate plugin, and it's ready to go. It's not active because it hadn't been in the live environment and been activated because it didn't exist there. It's inactive, but the plugin is there, and we're ready to go to deploy it. Um, so just jumping back to the, the import, it's almost done, sort of downloading and, uh, and deploying. And uh, uh, I will show that in just a second. Um, other things you might uh, be interested in from the Pantheon dashboard perspective, um, you know, for, for developers that are used to being more hands-on, um, you can use Git. Uh, you can clone your website down to your local development environment, and you can push anything you push to master will be deployed into the development environment. Um, you also have direct connection information if you want to get onto the database. Um, if you want to be able to make, you know, if you're a command line SFTP user, you can do that too. Um, we run high performance caching for all sites, and so you need to be able to clear those caches. You can do that right from the dashboard. Um, we make backups and make that really easy, so people can schedule backups to happen on a daily basis or create them on demand, um, and those just happen. Uh, and that happens outside the context of your site, so you don't have to worry about some plugin that you're running making your website slow while it's being backed up. Pantheon can back up your website with zero impact to any of your, uh, your users. Um, we allow you to put a, a lock on the site. So suppose this was uh, something that you wanted to share and require a password for access to the dev site. Um, usually you might be doing that manually with some kind of HT access stuff. Pantheon is just a part of the dashboard. Um, and that, that's part of like, if you want to run a very secure site, what you would do is you would require a password to access the development environment. And the development environment is, again, the only place when you're in this uh, on-server development SFTP mode where WordPress can self-install code. That gives you a really, really secure setup um, and protects you from the ability of these, uh, these, these malware attacks to get out there. Um, in the live environment, you know, where we might as well go ahead and deploy the code. Um, in the live environment, WordPress can never self-alter and never self-update. That's because we want to make sure that the, the changes, whether it's a WordPress core update, some custom development on your theme or a custom plugin or a plugin you've downloaded from the community, always goes through that deployment process. You always do your dev in dev and then deploy out to live. And that sort of nips in the bud most of the most, of the most concerning security concerns uh, for, for folks with WordPress sites. So I'm just going to go ahead and think this actually might be done. And it could be a little bit of a, yeah, it was just a little update thing. So what we see here in the, uh, in the development environment for my webinar import is that we've got uh, the first commit is the import of the, of the site. Um, and the connection mode is set to Git. And if I jump out here, we can see that this actually has a different theme. You know, I, I just set this up very, very quickly. But, uh, but basically, we've imported this site. And, uh, and any site with, uh, with, that manages these common import-export plugins should be a quick import to Pantheon. 
Um, suppose I wanted to have some more people work on me on this import site. Well, sure. Why don't I invite Ursula? Um, I'll invite her. And now what we see is Ursula is actually part of the team. Um, suppose that we were ready to take this site live. I could go over here into settings, and I could say, oh, actually, you know what, Wes, uh, my colleague here, is actually the business owner for the site. He's the one with the credit card. I don't, you know, I, I don't need to pay for this. Uh, and I actually think we should probably launch the pro level since this is a pretty important site, and I'm going to send him the invitation. What that's going to do is actually give Wes, or you know, in this case, your, your manager, your budget holder, or your client, uh, a nice link in their email that will uh, give them a, a, a simple page that says, hey, so-and-so has invited you to pay for the site on Pantheon. If you would do so, then you know, they'll be able to take it live. And what that will do is it'll actually give Wes, if he actually follows through on that, would become the owner of the site. You can actually transfer ownership at any point in here. Since I'm the owner now, I can go ahead and make Ursula the owner. Um, you know, it's going to require me to verify that. Um, but now what that means is Ursula has ultimate decision-making authority for the site. I can no longer make anyone else the owner. I could leave the site if I'm done with it, but, uh, but it's Ursula's responsibility to going forward to, to make sure that this site is taken care of. And that's kind of uh, something we've built into the core of the platform because we know that sites pass through many hands from development to client, so on and so forth. Um, so that's the extent of the quick demo. Um, I want to go ahead and move on at this point to talk a little bit with, uh, with Austin about Alley Interactive. So, um, so Austin, why don't you just sort of give your spiel and intro yourself and talk about who Alley is and, and what you guys do. Yeah, so we are um, uh, a uh, web agency um, based out of New York City with, with people all over the U.S. Um, and we build websites for um, uh, clients in news media, entertainment, and then nonprofits in higher education. Um, we are sector focused, not um, platform focused, uh, but we do most of our work with Drupal and WordPress. Um, okay. And you've got some pretty interesting customers. Yeah, um, yeah, we're very, very lucky. Um, and a lot of these clients are already on um, the Drupal version of, of Pantheon. And we uh, launched our first WordPress um, Pantheon customer in January. Excellent. So let's just talk a little bit about that um, in terms of uh, what this site was and what your experience was uh, in terms of getting it online. Yeah. Um, I mean, the the workflow on, on Pantheon for WordPress is just as good as it is um, for, for Drupal, which is to say the best. Um, and uh, the, really the only, hur the only hurdles that we had with Chalkbeat that were any different from uh, a Drupal site related to the fact that it was the first and that we had some... Um, you know, WordPress can fix stuff to iron out, but that's, you know, um, that was really it. The, the workflow, the um, dev sites, the staging sites, you know, we were able to use multi-dev with, uh, with WordPress right, right out the door. Yeah, that was something that I didn't uh, include in my demo, but can you explain to folks what multi-dev is? Yeah, right. So, um, you know, when we work on a, a project uh, with uh, that's deploying the Pantheon. We uh, we have Pantheon working as a, um, a Git repository, not generally um, an SFTP mode. And when you do it, when you use it like that, you can um, you can configure you know new dev environments out of uh, um, out of nothing basically, just with a, a few clicks that can operate off of some other branch. Um, you know, so if you're if you're working on a long running feature or like version two of a build. Um, you don't want to you don't want to put that stuff on your dev dev site because that's sort of standing in the way of, of things going live. Um, so it, it it gels really nicely with the um, kind of feature branch best practice that we employ on every project, um, and we use it we use it on almost every Pantheon site that we build. Cool. And uh, and Chalkbeat, I mean, you know, we, we wouldn't be asking you to talk about it if it wasn't a successful launch, but are, are the, the Chalkbeat folks themselves happy with the results and everything? Yeah, well, I, I mean, I think that the, the, great, <laughs> the great news for us and, and Pantheon is that they, uh, um, they see this as really frictionless, you know. Um, they, are, they themselves are not, um, you know, not web developers, generally speaking. The one IT guy that, that they have working on their side a little bit 
um, has felt right at home on, on, on Pantheon. Um, but I think to them, Pantheon is where their site lives, and, um, and that's that. Which is uh, cool, you know. And for some clients, that's that's the best case scenario. Obviously, other clients are are very hands on about it, and um, all of those clients that have had direct experience with, with Pantheon have been um, uh, equally impressed. Especially coming from the WordPress side, where the um, development tool chain on um, um, you know website platforms has uh, has really lagged um, for for the last several years. It, this is obviously um, very impressive for a lot of our clients. Hey, that's good to hear. Well, hopefully we'll be raising the game for all parties. Um, Austin, I have a question for you. Um, you know, the common question we get are, what is, when do you choose, what are the reasons for choosing WordPress over Drupal and vice versa in terms of site complexity and level of skill set, developer skill set? Can you talk a bit more about that? Yeah, you know, that's going to be a different answer for us than, than for a lot of people. Um, we have, uh, uh, you know, for a long time built some very complex WordPress sites. There's, I think the stock answer to that is, like, WordPress is great if you, uh, you know, if you just need a blog or you just need, um, um, you know, a relatively simple sort of brochure or site. But I, I, I think that the market is changing, that, you know, the, the open source CMS market is changing to acknowledge uh, what's been possible on WordPress um, now for um, a, a number of years, which is um, that it's, it really is possible to do with WordPress um, sites that are every bit as complicated as have been possible with Drupal for, um, you know, maybe the last eight years. So the, uh, for us, the criteria are um, are mostly about um, you know the client's preference. There are there are big you know big things that we talk about with Drupal and, and WordPress um, you know have to do with upgradability. Um, you know, with WordPress, you get kind of a, um, a steady drip of, of site updates, whereas with Drupal, you get you know you really have to pay attention to the major version um, releases. So. Uh, in that sense, maybe the total cost of ownership of WordPress um, is, is lower, but on the flip side, um, you know, when a major Drupal version comes out, they are more able to kind of rethink the whole platform and, um, and provide kind of the, the latest stuff. Not to say that that's not also true with, uh, um, uh, with, with WordPress to, to an extent, but there are, there are definitely trade-offs. So it comes down to, um, to client preference and, um, uh, you know, I, I guess that's sort of a, a taste of the con kind of conversation that we have with any client that comes to us wondering which platform to use, um, and and we try and try and hear how they feel about each platform and and um, and, and go from there. Makes sense. Do you want to? Do you just want to jump into other other questions, Ursula, that we're getting from the? Yeah. Um, you know, what is your advice to developers? Um, you know, we have a lot of developers on the call, and you know, as one of the first users of Pantheon for WordPress, um, can you just describe to us what are your advice? What's the advice there? I mean, I, I think. I, Developers like me probably are best off just jumping in. I mean, I, I, I think as Josh showed um, in the in the in the demo, it's really very straightforward. It, I mean, you the dashboard basically gives you a walkthrough to set up your first site, um, and and from there, you know, it's it's simple to clone it and um, and start actively working with it. So, uh, you know, I I have certainly referred to Pantheon's excellent documentation, but it's not something that I have. Um, um, I've really felt necessary in, in starting a new project. Granted, you know, we've been w working on, on Drupal projects with, with Pantheon for a long time, and it's, it's, um, it's very simpler, but it's, it's very, um, very similar. But, uh, you know, from, from, from my perspective, when I get my hands on a new tool, I just want to start using it. And I think that's possible with uh, uh, Pantheon's WordPress implementation. Cool. So if I have a question from Larry. Um, just to clarify, content owners can still create pages and posts on the production site, but plugins and theme updates can only take place on staging and dev? Uh, only on dev, to be, to be really clear on that. The, the notion is, and, and this is something that is, uh, is a, um, we popularized, even before we, we launched Pantheon as a business, my, my co-founders and I had, had popularized within the Drupal universe this notion of 
uh, thinking of your website as two different components, the code that executes the website and the content uh, that's in the database, and viewing those as really separate entities and using this kind of three-phase, you know, you can have more than three, but at a minimum, three-phase workflow for continuous integration and popularizing those notions in the Drupal space for, for a long time. Uh, I think those are newer notions in the WordPress space, although you'll find that most of the people who do really large sites or really high-profile sites have some version of that, um, some, some, some equivalent of that notion. The idea is that the, the, the content work should happen in the live environment because that's actually live on the site. It, it, it depends, you know, if you have a site that just, you know, you, you never make changes to the live environment, you can, like, do the work in, in the staging environment and then push out a database. Um, for a read-only site, that's possible. But most of the time, the, the power of having WordPress uh, or any content management system is that you can take a, 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 a someone who's not a developer and say, you know, go ahead, manage your content, post new things, fix that spelling error. You know, that's Ursula's, Ursula's world where, I mean, just to bring it back at a higher level, this is really good stuff for organizations. When she told the story when we first hired uh, her at Pantheon, where previously at Salesforce, they would deploy their website once a day. You de your website would deploy at 3 p.m., and if you didn't get your fix in by 3 p.m., you had to live with whatever was broken for another 24 hours, which to me is just kind of mind-boggling that people would even put up with that. But that's, that's sort of the, the status quo in a lot of organizations and for people who are using older tools. People want these content management tools because they want to be able to work right on the website, and that's a huge value. But then you need to be able to separate out the work that happens on the code, right? A lot of times, um, you know, when web developers first get started, you're like developing on the live website, which means that if you make a syntax error, the website is down. Um, or if you, you know, or if you, you know, you avoid making syntax errors, but you do something that has unintended side effects, your website is now buggy or has a regression. The, the beauty of having separate environments for development is that it gives you a safe place that's yours to do the dev work. It's protected from a security standpoint. And then when that dev work is giving you the results you want, you can then deploy it out to live. And it allows developers and the sort of content owners of the site, as Larry put it, to work in harmony rather than having to worry about stepping on one of those toes or having a freeze or, or doing all these other things that kind of make everybody frustrated and slow down your workflow. Yeah, thanks, Josh. Another question from Phyllis. Um, this relates to Drupal and WordPress. So if you have many potential users in different roles, which would work better? I mean, I, I, I would defer back to, to sort of Austin's question on that. It's really hard to choose which is right. There's no way to say that in, in any blanket context that you, you would, this, this is the right choice for Drupal or this is the right choice for WordPress. I think that there are, there are some technical capabilities that they have. You know, WordPress certainly has a really great um, user experience from the editorial standpoint. So if you have a, like uh, people who are less tech savvy or are only going to be touching this tool, you know, once infrequently, then that user experience benefit might be uh, of, of greater value. But then there are other things you can do with Drupal that are, that are just more complex to implement in WordPress or, or a bit harder. So you might want to think about what are the end goals of the site, how can I achieve those with one technology or the other. Um, I think if you're thinking about really complex content workflows where there's a, like a multi-stage review process, that's something that the Drupal community has spent a lot of time working on and, and their whole like sets of uh, modules there Modules are what Drupal calls plugins um, that are designed to help you review content before it's published all in the CMS. Um, I'm sure WordPress has some, but I know that the ones in Drupal have really been used by large organizations to do that process for a long time. Uh, really, it, it comes down to what the specific use case is, and that's something that I would look to your web developer to help you figure out. The truth is that you know, your web developer also may know how to do things really well with one tool versus the other, and if you're interested in working with that developer uh, and you like them, you're, you're probably best off working with the tools that they suggest, because those are the ones they're going to be the most able to implement uh, effectively for you. Right. Um, Charlie has a different question, and this is more platform specific. What is the best way to handle video, audio, or large images? Um, I, images, large images, it depends on what you mean by large. Um, uh, most of the time when people say large images, they just mean, you know, sort of uh, big coming from a, a relatively recent model uh, digital camera, in which case the, the content management tools for WordPress or Drupal are designed to handle those images and do the downsampling to make thumbnails and so on and so forth. Um, if you're talking about like 
really large images, like from a SLR where your individual image is 80 to 100 megabytes, then I would, I would caveat that case. But for most of the time, large images, people are talking about just, just big enough ones that then need to be downscaled by the CMS to be presented as a thumbnail. Um, let, let the CMS handle images. I don't recommend, I, video and audio are harder. Um, because it's streaming media, when people want to use video and audio, it's not that they want to like a place to store a big file, it's that they want to let people watch or listen to that file. Um, and I recommend really looking at the different cloud platforms that are out there for managing video and audio content. Um, there are different trade-offs, right? So if you, um, you know, to be honest, if you're doing a lot of video content and you don't mind the fact that, the, that they'll put some ads in it occasionally, YouTube is a great way to manage your video content. Hey, first of all, it's free. Second of all, you can get more viewers for your content through YouTube, which is a huge win sometimes. Uh, for audio, I really like SoundCloud. I think they're sort of setting the pace for making it easier to share uh, music and podcasts. But there are a number of players out there, and if your use case is streaming media, that's actually a very different use case than content management. What you want to think about is you need to build a website that includes streaming media, but it's probably going to be, for a best user experience, going to be included in, a, in an embedded context. And so I would look for who has the best in class embed, and then how do you integrate those embeds with your content management system. Right. Um, Kyle um, has a different question. Are there any command line tools to work with web WordPress sites on Pantheon that are similar to Drush? Um, more specifically, syncing databases slash files to local compared to downloading them manually? Yes. So their WordPress has a tool called WPCLI, and it is the Drush of WordPress. Um, it, 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 uh, the, the same concept is you want to be able to interact with your website via command line interface not via a web interface. And then there's a lot of really great tools in there. We, we, we package that on the platform and there's, there's some documentation uh, to it uh, that you can, you can definitely find. We also provide, uh, and you can get database dumps through that, I'm, I'm pretty sure. We also provide on Pantheon command line interface to the platform. So you, anything you see us do by clicking around in the Pantheon dashboard can be executed from a command line client. And that's great because power developers kind of prefer command line tools and they're scriptable, which means you can put, bring Pantheon into your own automation workflow you might already have in a way that is, you know, uh, can, can be built into something that is operated by scripts and, and job runners and, and Jenkins and things like that rather than by people. Great. Um, Larry has an additional question. He reads that Pantheon doesn't support or need the caching plugins for WordPress like Supercache. Can you provide more info on how Pantheon handles it? Yes. So Pantheon platform includes very high performance best practice reverse proxy caching. And what this means is uh, reverse proxy caching is super useful when you have a, a viral traffic spike um, or you do a PR push. And really, people are tending to click on the same link. They're looking to see this page. Uh, and you actually, at a certain point, don't need to ask your content management system to regenerate that page over and over again. Everybody's looking for the same thing. And a reverse proxy is thousands of times more efficient than a web app, a web, uh, website content management system at delivering that. And so um, in the WordPress world, very often people have been working in like these shared hosting environments or these kind of low, lower end VPS environments where setting up reverse proxy is just out of scope, too hard, it's not included. Maybe you can do it yourself, but it's kind of tricky. And so the, the WordPress caching plugin space is very much um, geared towards just saving copies of pages onto the disk. Um, that's not as efficient as a reverse proxy cache. And more importantly, if you're not just running in one place at the same time, it's kind of dangerous because on Pantheon, you're distributed. There is no one disk that you save things to. Your site might be running at various different points in our matrix at any, any time. And so we have to actually create services for caching. So the, the file-based caching systems don't work as expected because, uh, because we don't run you in like a, a, a standard, like, oh, you're in your little virtual machine type of architecture. And the reverse proxy caching um, is much, much higher performance and much more scalable. So we include a plugin to allow you to do things like clear cache and set cache lifetimes and so forth with our, with our platform's caching. And it kind of obliviates the need to do those uh, WP super cache or W3C cache or other plugins. Great. Uh, this question is actually for Austin. Austin, how long did it take you to build and launch Chalkbeat on Pantheon using Pantheon versus traditional tools? Um, if you could just give a quick comparison on the timeline for that. <clears throat> um, boy, 
uh, since we, I don't have a good data point since we didn't launch it on traditional tools, but I, I can take a guess. Um, the uh, I, I think it probably saved us um, in the most traditional tool sense, maybe 16 to 20 hours um, of, of developer time. Um, and we got a lot more than we would have um, than we would have configured for ourselves. You know, our um, we do have clients who, um, you know, for one reason or the other, um, still uh, host their site internally or on, you know, a traditional um, colo hosting vendor. And for them, we're very much in sort of like, okay, you get one dev site, um, and it's going to run a dev branch. And when we're when we need to show you a feature branch, we're going to merge into that dev branch, and you're going to get to look at it in one place. Um, I, obviously, with Pantheon, we have a lot more um, a lot more power than that. So I think just sort of at at a basic, like, just enough to launch, um, uh, it saved us a couple of days for sure. Um, and we got much more than we would have otherwise. Great. Um, so we have, we don't have any more questions. So uh, this, this webinar will be recorded. You can access it off our YouTube channel. We'll also send you a link for it. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining us. And enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thanks, Austin, man. Yeah, thanks, Josh. Take, take care. All right. Have a good one.